Hi guys, so we're just about to get into our game of Coup with you. And this is in the Resistance Universe. It is a game of secret identities and bluffing and calling other people's bluff. We may even say naughty words. Just a little bit. So, on our player card, we will have a number of actions we can take. This includes our very vanilla take one income, which means taking one money from the pot, or a number of income or actions that require us to have certain cards in front of us. Each player will have two cards face down from the rest of the group. They will know what the card says before anyone else does, and they can take advantage of either using the card that they have, or trying to get away with a role that they don't have. So this little chart asks you to either pretend you're the Duke, which will take three income at a time, an assassin who will only pay three to kill someone else, an inquisitor who will either exchange their own roles or look at others, a captain who steals two coins from others, or a contessa who can't be assassinated. Now, when and if someone plays against you or against others, you don't really believe them, you can call their bluff. By calling their bluff, you ask them to reveal themselves. If you say you're the Duke and you're not actually the Duke, if I call you on it, you will lose a life of your two face down cards that asks you to flip one up and leave it for the rest of the game. If I call your bluff and you're not actually bluffing, you are the Duke, I will lose a life and you get to shuffle your Duke back in and draw a new card. The last person standing wins, so the last person with a face down card will win the game. There's a few more rules on this card and I'll show it at the end of the video, but let's get into a quick game with Brian and myself. What I is wouldn't the coup action? The coup action costs seven money and murder is an identity no matter what they are. It doesn't care about any of whatever's up printed on your cards, you get to do it no matter what. But it is seven money, so if someone's working toward it, you'll see it coming. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this game at two players. We're working on variants, thank you Jake, but this will give you a better idea of what the game is. So everyone will look at their two cards, place them face down in front of them, start with two money in their kitty, and start taking actions. I'm the captain. So the captain would steal two of my money. At this point, I only have two money, so I'm going to say, I call BS. Well, okay then. So, he was the captain. He gets to shuffle that back into the deck and draw a new card. And I must reveal myself as one of my two identities, which is no longer usable. And now I have one identity to work with. As my action, I will do. That's good. I am the captain. Seems good. <laughs> so getting to seven money means death for me in a two-player game, as you can see. Uh, so all I can do at this point is pray. I will cry out loud. I will ambassador. Okay. So I will take my card, shuffle it back in, and then reveal a new card from the deck. And I won't do that at face up. So do. I'm the assassin. I call your bluff because otherwise I die. Spend your three money though. <laughs> three money and an assassin. So, I have obviously died in this game. <laughs> n d no, 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 no. This Lady Gaga wannabe does not get to kill me. The other assassin gets to kill me. Um, but, uh, as you can see, this game could be a lot of fun if you have a big group of people. We've had a blast playing this with four or five folks. Uh, we are still trying to find a way to make it dynamic for two, but it seems to be a group game. Uh, we will cut back in a little while to record our thoughts on what the game was like. Thank you. Alright, Brian of Mythic MTG Tech, what do you think of Koo? 
I really like it as a four to five player game. It's very dynamic. There's a lot of bluffing involved. It's definitely a lot of fun. I will second his thoughts as saying this is a group game. This is multiplayer and hilariously fun. I can't see why it has the lower player limit here. Why you'd ever play a two player game with this I cannot figure out because there's nothing other to do than bluff. So in a bluffing game with two players, the first person to be found at bluffing is going to lose. Um, it comes with pretty nice cards. They're a weird size. They're less large than Dixit cards, but larger than your average standard Magic card. Um, the non-Kickstarter version has kind of a white coin, and this one has a silvery sheen coin, but it doesn't matter. The one thing that this one had that the regular retail version will not is rules for an Inquisitor instead of just an Ambassador. This seems like an oversight to me because it's one more line of text, it's one more rule to add in, and it was much more dynamic than having the ambassador alone. So even if I had the retail version, I would be playing with Inquisitors no matter what. Now, I'm definitely a fan of bluffing games. Um, I would say that this is uh, more fun so far in playing it than Resistance or even Avalon. Um, and maybe up there in the same category as the Shadow Hunters or um, Citadels. I will always put Shadow Hunters first because what Shadow Hunters does is it makes people interact. It makes people want to punch each other because you're you just happen to be close to each other on the map, and it doesn't live or die by whatever cards you draw. It happens to be enhanced by whatever cards you draw. If you're shooting machetes out of your shotgun, that's hilarious. But Shadow Hunters does not make it where you can win or lose by whatever cards you have. Who Card does draw is definitely a little punishing in this game, and it, it can be a little bit difficult. You occasionally run into situations where you're able to calculate out the next few moves and figure out who has won. Es um, especially once people's identities are flipped over, as you start killing them off, you start seeing cards flipped over, and you can kind of math out the rest of what's in the deck, and if three contestants are left in the deck and you have an assassin, you're just not feeling really plucky and ready to kill people because you just know that contestants are out there to counter you. It, it does seem like it would be nice to have another action where you could give up two coins and just shuffle away your current card um, so that if you're stuck with a card that is clearly useless given the information that has already been revealed that you have a way out of it. Now, as far as the game goes, I know that it was mostly developed at cons. It was kind of a, hey, we as a family used to play this game kind of like this. Thank you for making the resistance. Would you like to see Coup? So I understand that it's probably pretty house rule friendly. But as far as a four to six player game goes, I'm happy to play it just as written. I, it, I just wish they had included the Inquisitor. But overall... I'm giving it like a like an 8 out of 10, very solid, quick little filler game, end of the night. I'd, I'd be happy to play it with anyone. Yeah, super fast, super easy to learn, um, solid for four to six players. All right, I think we're pretty quick on that. I think that might be all for this evening, but stay tuned. We're going to have some reviews of some full-size games later on this couple weeks, now that we have fancy new cameras and stuff. You guys, check out my website at maggiebot.com. Check out Brian's YouTube at mythicmtgtech.com. Or it's YouTube slash mythicmtgtech. Thank you. Thank you.